Hey everyone, it's Nick with 30 Minute Foodie, and today I'm going to make a, um, a rib roast. Uh, this is going to be a uh, Rancher's Reserve Biff, Beef Biff <laughs> Ribeye Roast. As you can see, it's a very beautiful piece of meat. Uh, has some good marbling, as you can see. Uh, not too much. Uh, it does have a nice. Uh, Nice thick ring rate, so and a little bit more marbling. The more marbled, uh, the more prime the beef is. Um, I would say, I mean, the label doesn't say if this is prime choice or select. Uh, the meat market at Vaughn, at the grocery store, absolutely sucks. But um, they had a ton of these on sale. I mean, usually a piece of meat like this costs like 60 bucks, you know, in the off season or not during the holidays. Uh, right now they have them for $20. This is a uh, five pound rib roast, bone in. I would never buy a piece of meat without a bone. <laughs> it's always the best. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, I'm going to trim it up just a little bit. Not too much. I mean, it's looking pretty good. Uh, but what I'm going to do is go ahead and remove the bone. I'm not going to throw it away. It's not going to go to waste. Uh, get over here. So the bone's not going to go to waste. I'm going to use every bit of it. And you'll see how I do that. So the bone's right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a blade. I'm going to cut right down there. Right through there. Taking this whole section off. Leaving all the fat. I am not lead, I'm not removing any fat. Uh, if this was a little bit higher, a little thicker, then I would. Um, I would say if it's any thicker than this, you definitely want a quarter inch of fat to remain on it. It's what's going to keep the beef moist when it cooks. Okay. Also need to go ahead and remove uh, what's this thing called the shin bone. So you see, there's one bone here, the long ones. Yeah, let's see. So these are the long bones that go all the way down. Then there's two little bones right here. One right there and another one right over here. Right above these longer bones. This is called the shin bone. It's a piece that's connected to the back of the animal. Alright, so let me get a knife. Roll your sleeves up. I'm going to go ahead and start in the base, work my way all the way down to the bottom. Okay, get into that shin bone. So that's when my cut it stops. So now we come on the side here. If you look over here, see this? There's a bone there. There's another bone right there. And these bones on the bottom, these are the long ones. What you want to do is take a cut and you want to go all the way around the back like, like so. Okay. Just go ahead and take get that. Oh. Alright, so there you have it. This is what you have left and you're actually going to reuse this because these bones are going to add a lot of flavor. Uh, First, we need to separate the shin bone. This can be a little bit tricky because you want to go right between it. You're going between this bone and shin bone. It's a little tricky. As you can see, I have a little practice with this because, like I said, this meat, this kind of meat is not on sale often. So, so this is the shin bone. 
you can see, it just has a lot of fat, two little bones. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and rinse this puppy off now. Get off any bone shards. And when I cook it, it's going to cook like so. So your roast is going to sit on top of the bones. That's going to give it, you know, the support. The shin bone piece is going to go over here on the side towards the back. What's, that, what's going to happen is when this cooks, the flavor from these, these uh, bones, they have marrow. I don't know if you can see that. But there's a little bit of, you know, red coloration. That's bone marrow. So when it cooks, it's going to add more flavor into this piece. It's the piece you want. Also, removing the bones, once you finish cooking, you can take this off, you can slice it, and you can chew on those bones. Those bones are really good to chew on. And then it makes it a lot easier to, you know, slice your beef to those thin slices for sandwiches. Now, this one also comes with a little stupid thermometer, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave that in just because it's free. But, uh, go ahead and use my own, yeah, probe. Definitely going to stick that in there. So, I'm going to go ahead and rinse this off, and I'll be right back. Alrighty, so the meat's had a bath. Just go ahead and get <clears throat> this paper towel off of it. Just give it an extra pat, make sure it's nice and dry. Makes it a lot easier to handle. Wipe off your blade. Make sure there aren't any bone shards on that as well. Just get everything a good wipe down with some good old bloody, bloody, bloody. Okay, once again, do not remove this. Because you're going to need it. It's gonna, that's what's going to give it its flavor. And I'm also going to season this up, but keep in mind, this is already a delicious piece of meat. You don't have to do much. Salt and pepper in it is just helping it a little. It's a tiny bit. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and take some, chip, some twine. We need to actually attach the bones back to this piece of meat. How are we going to do that, you say? Okay, well, let's go ahead and turn this upside down. What you want to do is, you want to locate your bones. So it looks like I only got two of them. Hmm. Looks like there was more. Alright, got two bones. So what you want to do is you want to get your twine between your shin bone all the way along between the bone every single bone that you have and just go all the way across and you're going to leave this on it's going to cook with it all right easiest way is just to get some twine on the bottom pull it on through right, come on get on behave okay give it a nice tug Let's just go a couple times around it. There we go. Come on. So I'm going to go through between that bone. I'm going to go between the second bone again. Just because I thought I had a little bit more bones to work with, but I don't. Let's get that nice and tight. Let's go back. Let's go around the side here, between the other shin bone, back around, give it a nice tug, and uh, go ahead and give it a good nut. Oops, come on, not fancy, just a tiny damn thing. If you want to get fancy, you can go the other way with some more twine. I don't see any for it. Just work with what you got. I want you to go over there. Okay. So that's nicely fastened. Bones are not going to come off. Your shin bones are up top right here. Once again, when those cook, they're going to release flavor down to the thickest piece of the meat here. And uh, when you're finished tying it, all you should see is fat. 
Okay, all oh, that is fat. Alright. And now I've manhandled my meat. What I'm going to do is go ahead and stick in my other, my thermometer. Why I do that? Well, I need this to come up to room temperature. It's been sitting out for a good hour now. I need this to rise to uh, 70 degrees, 75 degrees would be best. So, it has to be at that temperature before I can start cooking. So let's see where this settles at. It. Around. Let's see this thickest piece of meat. So it's at 50 degrees right now, so I have a good 15 more degrees to, to come up. Very important, do not put this in the oven until it's come up to room temperature or the center. It will be super, super rare. I mean, I like it, but some people might not. Um, so, like I said, you don't have to do much seasoning. Um, I'm basically going to give it a quick uh, peppering. And also, I'm also going to add some uh, mustard, dry mustard, Coleman's mustard. This one right here. This one's a pretty authentic mustard. Gives you that authentic taste and that bark that you're looking for. So I'm going to completely cover it with uh, pepper and also the the mustard. Here, let me show you how I'm going to do that. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. So I'm just going to go ahead and sprinkle this with some give it a good helping of uh, black pepper. You don't need to cook this in a roasting pan. You can actually put it in a just one of those uh, like Pyrex cooking pans or a roaster or uh, not a roaster like a baking dish, which you would use for like a lasagna. It's fine. The ends don't need to be high up. It's gonna cook just fine. Um, I'm using this roasting pan just for seasoning, just to hold stuff up. Keep all the seasonings and lost seasonings all in the same spot so I can just roll it around, pick up pieces I lost. Now, if you wanted to, you can actually season between the bone and the actual um, rib, uh, the meat section. As you'll see, I do not salt. This, I will salt it before I cook, before I start the cooking process. Um, I think salt kind of makes the meat a little chewy. I could be wrong. It could be just a mental. Um, yeah, it could be mental. But I prefer to salt right before I start to cook. <laughs> Use a sign. Takes two whole tablespoons, or yeah, two tablespoons. Uh, so I'm going to also sprinkle on some mustard, kind of heavily. Let's give my arm a break. 
pepper grinder. Back to the pepper grinder. Flip it around. Let's go ahead and distribute some mustard powder all over. said all I'm doing with this season is just helping it out. It doesn't even need it. If you don't feel like putting on seasonings or you're short stocked on seasonings or pepper and you find yourself with just some salt, just salt it. Just leave all the fat on it. That's all your flavor. Let's get this probe back in there. Wait for that to come up to temperature. That's going to take. Wow, that side was a little cooler than the other side. Okay. Well, it's going to take at least another hour to come up to temperature. Then into the oven that uh, started off at 450 just to get a nice uh, brown on the top. Which you don't have to do. It helps speed it up a little bit. Um, and then you turn it down to uh, 3, 350, 325, I believe it was 350, and then it cooks for two hours. Put an instant read thermometer in there and wait until the meat comes up to. Alright, I gotta do a little bit of homework. I have to redo that part. Alright, that's it. Alright, so while the meat is over there, coming up to temperature, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and. Uh, Cut up some vegetables. Celery. Carrots. Why, you say? As that roast cooks, a lot of that fat's going to render. It's going to come and it's going to get to the bottom of the pan. It's just going to sit there. And, we, you know, it's only going to cook for two hours, so you don't really need to baste it. Plus, there's no need to baste it because of the fat. So in those drippings, what you want to, you know, sit in at, you know, those flavors, some vegetables. That's going to give you a nice au jus. Alright, so for this au jus, we're going to use one onion, one medium sized onion, not too big, not too big, two, two or three of these. And if you want to use salad root, you can do that. Honestly, I prefer salad root. Um, these tiny little carrots. I'll go ahead and toss them too as well. So that's two celery, two carrots, one onion, a whole head of garlic. Oh yeah, buddy. And I'll show you the trick with the garlic. I'm actually going to stick some of this under the fat. So if the fat renders and cooks. It's also cook and cook and flavor that fat with garlic. So as it runs down the sides, runs through the meat, it's distributing that garlic for you all the way through. So I'm gonna go ahead and give these a quick rinse sink. At the end, what I'm doing is I'm just gonna strain all this stuff off and just have the juice left over. So it's a quick chop. to a roast so chop this up too small it's just gonna burn
into the bowl. Carbs into the bowl. So the garlic, since I do need the whole thing, I'm just going to smack it. And we got the whole thing in there. Go down there. Find your garlic. Alright, let's take these small puppies. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with these guys. Come on. Over here. Zoom in for you guys. People on the back seat. See? Take like a little parry knife. Okay. Go ahead and just slice a couple of slits in there. Slide that garlic on in there. Same thing on this side. Slide that garlic on in. Really put as much as you want. And if you're ever making a leg of lamb, this is also a great technique to remember. You can use this technique as well on a leg of lamb. Okay. So that's four cloves right in there. The rest of the cloves are going to go into the bottom for our au jus. Make it nice and spicy. Spicy with garlic. I wouldn't have it any other way. Alright, so that's pretty much done. Uh, let's finish busting up this garlic. Oh man, I almost forgot. Most important, herbs. Fresh from the damn garden. <laughs> Sorry, Jamie. You're just so damn good at it. Alright, so he's just gonna go in whole. So this is um, yeah, about two. Two rosemary sprigs. Pick three, but I don't think I need it. Um, and one, two, three, four, yeah, this many time sprigs whole. Um, also, I need some bay leaf. Bay leaf. I'm gonna go ahead and do it with one. Take a look in the bowl. So it looks good. Bunch of vegetables, onions, carrots, celery, and some herbs, bay leaf. Voila. Oh yeah, can't forget. Most importantly, garlic. Time to go ahead and salt the meat. Let's get a mount right. Get a little heart shaped. As you can Now for the top. All the way over. All over. I'm just going to go ahead and give it another pepper. So I'm going to put a rack in this so that we can get the vegetables under there. Herbs down the middle.
get it in the damn thing. Right, Megan? What? Yeah. Never mind. Talk to the camera again. Okay. Now we got that clear. So the oven is heating up right now. The two, 425 is going to cook for four, uh, 40 minutes. And so this is a nice brown. So it looks roasted and brown and delicious. And then we're going to turn it down to 325 for another 40 minutes. And that's going to cook the inside. Alright. And into the oven it goes. In the, see it's perfectly middle. In the middle of the oven. Hey everyone, so I was just now getting to the editing of the video, and uh, yeah, I noticed that the end got cut off, camera wasn't on, so I couldn't show you the final product of the roast. Um, just to let you know, it did come out very well, it was cooked perfectly, it took a little bit longer, it took 30 minutes, so two and a half hours to cook uh, the five pound roast, and it started off at 425 for approximately 30 minutes. In the video I said 40 minutes, but it only really took 30 to get a nice dark brown on top. Um, so then I trimmed it down to, uh, it's, at first I said 325, I actually pulled it all the way, uh, brought it up to 350. Um, reason being is it cooked for two hours and it was settling around 120, 125, which is perfect if you like it super mooey, uh, rare. Which, yeah, some meats I like it. With this, I like to, I want it a little bit more cooked. So I ended up turning up the heat, giving it another 30 minutes, and I brought it up to 135. Um, once it rests for 30 minutes, yes, it takes a long time to rest. It actually came up to about 145, to 145 and 150. Um, it was perfectly juicy. We totally tore into that puppy that night. Uh, the next day, the next night, we actually made sandwiches out of it. Which is awesome and tip if you are ever going to use your your, your uh, rib roast for sandwiches the next day after it's been sitting in the fridge it got cold um, if you have a flat gr a griddle that'd be great if you don't just use a cast iron pot or a non-stick pan slice it really thinly and just hit it real fast with some heat um, <clears throat> gives it a nice crisp on the outside and it warms it through uh, thoroughly um, so yeah, it was an awesome, awesome roast. And I'm um, definitely going to go get another one. Yum. See ya.